All right, Matt Gannon, Jers, we are back. The final event of the season, the Tour Championship, is upon us. We had boots last week at the BMW Championship. You were there. An interesting event, uh, I think, and we'll, we'll talk about that. And I'm not even sure what we'll talk about for the Tour Championship. I don't believe any of the uh, without starting strokes markets are out. I haven't. Have you, have you seen any of those yet? I haven't seen any. No, I haven't yet. I mean, we, I'm sure we both have like ideas of guys that we'd want to bet, and we can generalize what odds they are. But um, yeah, it's definitely a a weird week that we can make whatever we want to make out of it. But it is the finale of the PGA Tour, so we have to keep the content going and give our takes. But there's always takes about this event that people love it people hate it uh it doesn't really i don't really care too much i'm happy we get golf but there could be a better way to do it for sure uh as always uh like and subscribe if you're listening on uh youtube and uh give us a five-star review if you're so inclined as we always say we got to earn that uh we got to prove ourselves to be ball knowers to get the five-star reviews so uh, if you're listening on spotify and apple we appreciate that and of course we'll uh, have the event covered up on the site as we always do and then uh with the fall swing and the the fall uh, season upon us, uh, we'll have some updates on kind of what the, the content schedule and plan for the uh, fall will be here soon enough. Uh, I don't believe there's any PGA Tour events next week, but we've got the DP, we've got live, we've got golf. There, there's always something to. Uh, but I think uh, did you did you hit a winner on the uh, DP last week, Freddie? Freddie, Freddie Lax. Lax. You play Freddie Lax uh, in a Nordic event, everyone knows that. So, uh, yeah, it was a nice little six under round came from behind and I was pissed because I had Romain Langosque the week before and I was about to bet him. And then I was in the car with Brendan intern, Brendan. And I was like, I don't really like, I don't really like Langosque's stats this week. I'm not going to bet him again. And then he was like leading after 54 holes. I was like, seriously, this is going to happen. But I, I threw the Freddie Lax bet in 35 to one and, uh, came through for me. That was the uh, Danish golf championship, I do believe. And I yeah. will say, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously happy that you hit a winner. Having no Viking Cup player win the Danish championship and have a, a one, I guess, uh, Lucas Beergard, who I didn't even know was still playing golf, finished uh, T2. But when I just go to the Danish championship, did Danish golf championship here on Google. And I see the leaderboard three French flags on the top four at our Viking cup uh, national open. Frenchmen have been playing really well as back-to-back winners for the Frenchmen on the DP world tour. Rivetto Do you think the they've before. been inspired by uh, what Perez did in the final round at the golf national? I, and I think Perez has been inspired from like Pavone just winning in America. Cause they all know that they're better than Pavone. So like, what are we doing here? Like, let's 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 win golf tournaments. So it's clearly uh, working. But I will say, our guy uh, Jacob Scott Olson, the mm-hmm. uh, he's the amateur, played really really well. And I love his commitment to wearing the Denmark Q zip. He's <laughs> worn it every single time we've seen him, and he wore it like, in every round uh, last week. Like, I don't know like where he got that. Like, does he think he has to wear it because he's Nordic? But I love it. It just says Denmark. Yeah, I only tuned in. I think it was maybe Friday. I flipped it on. And I saw him out there. I almost texted you. He's a left-hander, uh, an amateur from uh, Denmark. He's next man up. He's definitely on the uh, provisional Viking Cup squad. He's definitely on the uh, junior Viking junior, Cup yeah, squad. Yeah. Uh, without a doubt, we saw him at the Open. Uh, he was on the... They have the big screens up at the Open where they're always showing... It's basically <laughs> live from, but it's 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 better. They're like on the range and they're interviewing guys simultaneously. Shout out to the Open. But uh, he was up there. And the guy who was interviewing him kept trying to get him to hit these like crazy punch shots he was like hit your driver like yeah he's like hit your driver like 20 feet off the ground and he legitimately couldn't do it and it looked like it was messing up his swing for the tournament it was honestly getting a little awkward because the announcer kept being like what if you hit like a 97 yard slice with your driver and he would try and it wouldn't he's like i can't do it and i was like i don't know if you should be trying to hit those shots uh, before the tournament. It's funny it's good content but, though uh bmw championship uh castle p you were there you got a feel for it uh you were, you went uh thursday and friday or did you which just days did half, you watch just half of thursday and i kind of got the feeling that it was going to be not the best viewing while i was there so we were there thursday and we were, were we have to leave it was just that bad uh like i told you earlier in the week you can only see one hole at a time and the fact that it's the bmw only 50 guys you weren't getting much combined with the crowds combined with the the very hilly course, obviously, uh, it wasn't worth our time. So we cut our day shortly, got to like played golf earlier than we expected that day. So I I mean, hindsight, we wouldn't have went Thursday, but we had the tickets already, so we did go. But um, yeah, so I was only there Tuesday 
all of Tuesday, all of Wednesday, and then half of Thursday. And let's start with this because we're always uh, we always want to reflect on what what we got right and what we got wrong. I think the one thing that jumped out to me was all signs in the lead up sounded like this was going to be a relatively easy course, some relatively yeah. low scoring conditions. Obviously, Keegan won it at minus twelve, and he only was minus two over the weekend. Um, we did see the second. I mean, we saw guys like Keegan. Uh, I mean, Adam Scott and, and Ludwig on the second round shot nine under. We saw uh, Sam shot seven under in the final round. So the scoring was out there, but it definitely wasn't across the board scoring that maybe you were seeing in the practice rounds. I think obviously the Vegas lines were up there as well. Like it seemed like it was going to be low scoring having been there and then seeing how it played. What do you think caused it to be more difficult maybe than uh, initial inklings? Yeah, that was definitely a, definitely a really good question and really weird how it panned out in my opinion. And I, the only thing I regret was not taking what Smiley said to me uh, more. You know what you know what I'm talking about. He said that if it if, if there's no rain, it's going to firm, firm up really quickly. And every single day that I was there, it rained a little bit, not not crazy. Like I would say, 40 minutes of rain, and it caused the golf course to play super super soft and super super receptive, like we saw Thursday into Friday and a little bit on Thursday morning. Um, but then after Saturday and Sunday, there was no rain. It was dry. And I cannot believe how quickly it firmed up just based on the scores. The balls weren't even stopping. Like like we saw all of tu- all of Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and it just got firm. And I – like like Wind- Wyndham knows. Wyndham said to Smiley, if we get one day of no rain, this place is going to firm up. And that's what happened. But even looking at the international leaderboards, like – when they had the stable for, for stable for format, if you look at those scorecards, every winner was around minus 19. So I just, with with today's technology, I think everyone was shocked with the line. Like, I know Vegas made it 23 and a half. They've been wrong before, but I, I thought, we all thought it was going to be a lot lower than it was. But I thought it was a fun watch and I had a few guys in the mix, but couldn't, couldn't get there. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't there, obviously, in the... Uh boots i wasn't there for the practice rounds but i think just watching like how it went because i watched probably this was one of the tournaments i watched the most of within the last few outside of the majors of recently just because i thought it was going to be an interesting course and obviously anytime we do boots i'm just intrigued to see how it plays and it seemed to me like guys still were struggling with the adjustments on the altitude the whole week like it seemed like they never got it right and i think we i i put this in the discord and it was something i was thinking about almost right out of the gates as soon as keegan started playing good in the first round and adam scott was up there some of these more experienced players noren's obviously an older player the last time that we had crazy conditions was at troon when we saw some of the craziest wind and most difficult conditions of the year and what we saw there was a lot of experienced what we call the you know older like dog type of players were up there billy ho was up there jay rose was up there like some of these more experienced guys obviously xander takes it but i would say xander plays kind of an old school style of game. He definitely has the shot shapes and stuff. Uh, he doesn't just, Xander's not a point and shoot golfer. Like that's no. not his game. So it makes sense that he would triumph at a place like Truen. And then this week it was Keegan up there the whole week. It was Adam Scott up there the whole week. Noren was up there. Like all of these kind of veteran, more experienced players, obviously Ludwig being the one who kind of stands out as he's kind of a, a newer guy onto the scene. But it seemed to me like it became so much about adjusting to the elevation changes and the altitude. And then they added in the wind over the weekend. Like that third round was one of the yeah. craziest third rounds I've ever seen. And then I even saw data golf said it was the most volatile, like leaderboard round ever in their like measurements of, of volatility. And we see Keegan win gaining almost a full stroke T to green per round over everybody else in the field. Fina was up there. He ends up winning, losing strokes, putting um, he just the whole time, was the only guy who was consistently hitting it pin high every yeah. single time he was getting the yardage just down him and his caddy had a great feel for it. And it ultimately to me just came down to who could figure out the adjustments on the altitude to hit their approaches the best. And I think that's what kept the scoring down. And I think that's ultimately why Keegan won because he was the best person at, at doing that. Yeah. And it was, they did look, look confused from the little, little I watched on TV after I came back home, like no one looked really comfortable over the ball into the shots. They took a lot of time, over the ball, Xander looked baffled a lot too with like the yardage, the wedges. I, I mean, we said in the Discord too, I've never seen so many guys hit 120 yard sand wedges into the water. Like it was crazy. And I saw the only guy I really saw struggling in the practice rounds was Rory, who like could not get those wedges out at all. 
but it just goes to show how difficult those conditions were and or those the adjustments were. I don't think the conditions were overly difficult. I think the adjustments were the uh, biggest thing. And Scotty talked about too. The adjustments were so hard to make all week. He talked about how he had a nine iron on back to back holes going forty yards different because one was downhill, one was uphill, and it was just the adjustments were too much for some guys. Crazy that uh, Ludwig held so far because Scovern is not really that type of veteran longtime caddy that we would think of to do it because we haven't seen great things from him. But uh, yeah, Keegan got the job done. Scotty Vale and him had no know what to do and they held held firm in the end. And uh, the, for those listening who don't listen every week or, or aren't in the ball nerds, we know Scovern is a veteran caddy. We uh, have him down in our strokes gain caddy rankings. We're not high. We're not as high on him. Him and Adam Hayes are on our uh, current, like we're like, lower on them overall than people are uh, on them. We have some beef with both of them. Uh, we'll talk about Ludwig in a second because I have a take on Ludwig that I think you, you're yeah. gonna, you're really going to enjoy. Uh, but what, there was one other thing I was going to say. Oh, the driving accuracy that to me was the most shocking thing like it these fairways looked pretty wide you were there they, these were wide fairways I, I was shocked how many people missed fairways and no one practiced out of the rough which is i was also shocked about and yet and this rough was penal like you got in the rough nothing good was happening like it was probably bogey if you got in the rough if you got lucky you might be able to whack it up near the green but it was probably going to be a bogey from the rough and i think that was what jumped out to me the most is i thought that guys were going to shit ton of fairways and they didn't like the driving accuracy was 65 percent for the field which is above tour average but like it's still not super high like that's no and that's it's only because like the fairways were wide like if they were normal size it would have been way lower way lower i was shocked as to how i missed fairways because visually it was way wider than valhalla and like i said no one was practicing out of the rough i didn't i, I felt like they didn't think that it was going to firm up over the weekend and the fairways were going to hold much better than they were yeah, I saw an interesting quote before the tournament, actually, that may explain some of this as well from uh, none other than Patrick Cantley, who uh, should be the king of doing uh, math and things on the course. He prides himself on being uh, such a such a stoic uh, guy. He obviously hit some terrible shots into the water. Him and uh, Lakava were a disgrace, uh, in my opinion, as somebody who bet Cantley uh, hitting shots. But he had an interesting quote before the tournament saying that just because we're hitting shorter clubs, maybe a three wood off of the tee or a seven iron instead of a four iron or a wedge instead of an eight iron, the dispersion, like the misses are still going to be the dispersion of that distance. So like, I think maybe what was happening off the tee was, yeah, we saw guys, a lot of guys hitting three wood, but those three woods were traveling further, even than drivers. They're spending more time in the air. If there's more spin, it gives the chance for the ball to, to get offline. So I was shocked by how many missed fairways there were, but I think it has to be something with the elevation and the wind because, and then the elevation on the holes too. There was a lot of like up and down on the tee shots, because if you give those guys flat tee shots with those wide of fairways, I think we see a lot more fairways get hit, especially when they're only hitting three woods or irons off of the tee. But I swear, every time I opened the app, my guys were in the rough, and I was like, this is not what I, my eyes are telling me should be happening at this course. So I think right. all of that just plays into a course that didn't play necessarily how uh, at least it it sounded like it would play. I think a lot of the keys ended up being pretty similar. The driving ended up not being that important. I mean, we look at the top five here and one, two, three, four of the guys lost strokes off the tee and nobody gained besides Xander gained over four. So like the off the tee was diminished. Ultimately, it just became very difficult, I think, to figure out who was going to be good on approach because the approach became such a uh, clusterfuck, basically, with yeah. all the changes. It and was then, a big strokes and caddy week, I think. Yeah. And shout out to Keegan and his caddy and the putting aspect definitely was in play as well keegan loses strokes but he had the generational t to green week because of his altitude adjustments but then guys like burns who is a guy i was high on coming into the week with the emphasis on the putter he gained infinity ludwig putted really well for the most part uh, adam scott putted great in the first two rounds he gained plus uh seven, seven or right, so in yeah. the first two rounds and then lost almost six five to six over the weekend so if he had stayed even medium hot with the putter, he would have won. Question is, I definitely question his dog. I do. Yeah. Big yeah. Time. That's fair. Keegan, though. We can't question Keegan's dog. Keegan no. now wins all the time. This is uh, how many wins for the, he's seven? Like, I think. I think it's seven. And, seven or eight. and three in the last year and a half or like yeah. brought back to October uh, 2022. So closing in on two years, but was in the mix, obviously, at uh, Farmers a couple of years ago, was in the mix at the Schwab this year, was in the mix at Sony. Probably should have won Sony, uh, to be honest. But what uh, 
what's your current state of the union just on Keegan overall? Because we know he's he's going to be the Ryder Cup captain. I'm obviously I'm upset because I bet Keegan so many times this year, and I've literally like for the last I think I bet him at Wyndham and 3M, and both times I wrote up, I think Keegan is going to do something special really? now that he's been announced Ryder Cup captain. I just purely vibes. I was like Keegan is going to fuck one of these events soon because that's Keegan and that's how he rolls. He finally does it. What's your state of the union on it? Yeah. And how do you think of it now that he's won a reasonably big event about a year out from when he's going to be the captain uh, for the Ryder Cup? See, I don't know if I gave this take or which I, I don't think I did because I'm happy that I didn't, but I was definitely on the record, at least in my head that I'd never, I thought Keegan was never going to win again. And like, I'll own it. I'll own it. saying that right now that I never thought Keegan was going to win after he uh, became the captain, but hindsight from what I saw and, and the way the course played and the way I co- the course I thought was going to play, hit the fairway, be really solid with your middle irons and wedges. That's Keegan Bradley, Travi comp. Like, let's do it. And I saw him flush. I wrote up a center of the club face guy. I saw him flush like crazy. Uh, so, yeah, like I'm not shocked that Keegan won, but I didn't think like it was uh, it was like really going to happen going into the week. 100 to 1 was a great number. Like, Is that what he was? I, I didn't even look because I didn't want to know. It, it was 100 to 1. Yeah. At least that's what a uh, golf bet posted, but I don't know how, if I could trust her credibility. Yeah, the uh, your quote on Keegan or what we put up on the site about what you saw from Keegan was absolute stripes, center of the club face, God. So Keegan was striping in the practice rounds. We've seen Keegan stripe in practice rounds before. Like he does just flush the irons yeah. and it hasn't translated. But again, the the elevation changes his adaption. And yeah, the Travi comp that was all, all of it. Clap that I, I thought Travi made sense mm-hmm. to comp most of the week. Uh, Keegan comes through there. So shout out to Keegan. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see if he keeps this up because I don't see any reason now why he can't like maybe next year he's got more of the Ryder Cup stuff to focus on. But if he wants to play on the team, which it seems like he does, he's clearly as games capable when he's in form of, of winning pretty much any event. You know, this is twice now that he's won signature events at, at relatively elevated odds. So uh, something to monitor as we get into next year and also as we come into President's Cup season. Maybe we'll talk a little bit of President's Cup, but I want to talk about Ludwig because I have a take. Ludwig, okay. to me, is a better version of Ryan Fox. He's a better <laughs> version of Ryan Fox, and this is why, Jers, what do we say about Ryan Fox? Wow, this guy just stripes the golf ball. This is unbelievable. Look how fast this guy plays. Like he's a streaky putter. That's a lot of streakiness in his game. Ludwig is like that too. And when I was watching Ludwig over the weekend, I was like, this dude needs to slow the fuck down with yeah. his play. He is playing too fast. And every time I watch Ryan Fox, who's a guy who's in the mix all of the time, obviously, shit. and he does win sometimes. Like, and again, this isn't a take. I, Ludwig will probably have a better career as a better overall player than Ryan Fox. But Ryan, I'm I'm talking about DP Ryan Fox, where he's like in in the mix yeah, every yeah. event. He's one of the best players on the DP. Every time you watch him, it's like, why are you playing so fast? Slow down and i've given these takes about ryan fox before yeah. ludwig stepping up there with all of this elevation all this went all of this stuff and he's not standing over the ball for any amount of time he's just stepping up in there and whacking it and i think the best example was uh 11 on saturday when he hit it into the water no one was hitting it into the water on that hole no. they really weren't even coming he missed by a lot yeah he's playing too fast and we've yeah. seen these numbers of his performance in final rounds and he played okay yesterday he he I didn't watch a ton of yesterday. He shot under par, uh, which he hadn't done in the final round recently. But I genuinely think his problem is he's playing too fast. Like, I'm, I'm cool with you playing fast. I want guys to play fast out there. But there's a reason that the best players in the world in the final rounds play slow. There's a reason why they do it. And I think that's something he needs to learn and adapt. So right now, Ludwig is Ryan Fox uh, for me. Yeah, maybe like like he gets in those grooves, which he's just like going, going, going. But when you're in, in the middle of a Sunday trying to win a golf tournament, Think about the shot. Think about what you need to do. And the biggest moment of his, one of the biggest moments of his golf career yesterday, his second shot into into fourteen, the par five. Uh, and what does he do? Puts it in the water. Did he, he pull it left? I, I didn't see it. Yeah. Oh, left and short. It, it was chunked. It was just like at uh, eleven at uh, Augusta. Yeah. Yes. Exactly like that. But it was a wor- way worse shot. It didn't, it didn't even come close to the uh, to carrying. It was a six iron. He hit the drive 411 yards, and then he had 220 into the into the hole. Hit a six iron, and it was nowhere. I because I was I was getting off the golf course, and I was tracking my phone. I'm like, all right, Ludwig's gonna make. He eagled the last two days. I'm like, all right, we're lit. At least at least a birdie. I get. I put on the X7 in my car, 
and they're talking about Ludwig hitting four from the middle of fairway. I'm like, there's no way. He did not just do this. And I looked on the app. It was nowhere near the green. And then I watched the replay. It was nowhere near the green. So tough scene for Ludwig. And a lot of those misses that have been costly, that one, Augusta, 11, 11 on Saturday of this tournament, they're short left misses. And in my opinion, when you don't like, I'm not a great golfer. I'm an okay golfer. But when, when my misses happen or like I get, I play too fast or I rush my swing. It's yeah. that pull to the, it's that pull yeah. for me. I'm a lefty. So it's a pull to the right, but for he gets up there, he spends no time over the ball. He just swings so fast and it gets going left and it misses. I like, He'll learn. Obviously, he's, this is his first year to even be in these positions. Is obviously great, and he's going to have a good career. But right now, he reminds me of how Ryan Fox plays final rounds, and you do not want to be compared to how Ryan Fox plays final rounds, and he plays too fast. So I think Ludwig will slow down. He'll play better. But right now, that would be my uh, area of improvement if I was uh, given the chance. No, to, that's, to that's a good take. I like it. A piece of advice. Shout out to my boy Sam Burns. Uh, played great, almost yeah, backdoored it. I be. thought there for a second that he uh, was going to pull I'm a sure. Colonial where he came back from. It was very similar to Colonial. I think he shot like seven or eight under in the final round there and everybody else kind of imploded and then he won. Uh, he's been playing great. He should make sense coming up here next <laughs> week. Shout, shout out for one final time this year. Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be joining us uh, at East Lake. Finished 36th this year in the FedEx Cup. CD, our boy, grabbing a top five finish at the he BMW tried. with a six under final round. Close. Uh, shout out to CD overall for a, for a great end of the year for CD. Obviously, picks up the yeah. win at the Rocket T uh, twenty at the T uh, nineteen at the three M, and then the T uh, five there at the BMW. So shout out to CD. Uh, Xander, maybe next year he'll get to East Lake. Oh, he's, actually, he, I, he's never been. Yeah, he should. I mean. Or he joins Ripper GC, one or the other. That, uh, that was I actually, wouldn't be mad about either. Yeah, that was my Adam Scott take. Is that why doesn't Adam Scott just join Ripper GC? I mean, he, I respect him being out there grinding, but maybe maybe take a look at, at Ripper. Uh, yeah. Adam Scott. Uh, Tommy backdoor T five, beautiful, tremendous. Beautiful. Actually, gained strokes it. putting, so yeah. Got him for that. Uh, Xander, Xander uh, got off to a. I think he was minus one at one point in the uh, third round. He was playing terrible. Things were going poorly. All of a sudden, he gets it going. He finishes T5. But uh, what's your you're the, Good golfer. Yeah, you're, you're the Xander guy. He's your guy, obviously, two-time uh, major champion, two-time jersey was on him. What's uh, – maybe let's, let's just – champion, too. Yeah, he probably should have. Him and Scotty, obviously, are starting at minus 10 and minus 8 this week. Xander has the insane course history. The lines right now, I'm seeing a plus 115 on Scotty, plus 220 on Xander. Let's just talk about that right now. I think this pod will be kind of just, we'll just talk about whatever. What's your stance on that? The Scotty plus 115, the Xander plus 220 in the without strokes. I mean, in the in the with strokes. Gun to my head, Scotty Scheffler. Value, Xander Shoffley. So I think Scotty wins the tour championship. But like you don't, if you think that you don't think the fact that he's plus money with a two shot head start is value. I, like I'm genuinely surprised. I thought he was going to be like minus like two fifty because he's won oh. every tournament, and the fact that he's plus one fifteen and gets to start with a two shot advantage over everybody in the field and he's rinsed or he's like just destroyed the fields most of the time this year. I know he hasn't been great at East Lake, and I know it's not necessarily a Scotty course. It's more of a driver putter course, and that's why it's that's favorite it. guys like Xander. He's win. But Two shot head start and he's plus money. Uh, no, I, but I'm saying like the fact that Xander is like a full, like double his price. I think that it might be a little bit of value, but no, I agree. I think that's a fine bet. And I think that's like, I think he's going to win this week. So, uh, and, and with the renovations, I think are going to suit Scotty better. And Xander actually talked about the renovations that he praised that it's not too much because he loves this place and like joking that it just leave it the way it is. I think I'm all right with it. But um, these greens haven't been touched since they've, been renovated so i'm expecting them to be fairly rock hard and and firm and fast bermuda uh give me scotty let's talk about scotty for a second and what he did last week because we saw on did you see on friday scotty had a little bit of a, a moment a meltdown uh, yeah a little bit of a meltdown yeah it's didn't uh acknowledge smiley and uh sam burns at happy hour <laughs> yeah and uh if you didn't see it so scotty hits it in the water he tries to gun it up near the green out of the rough not even close on 10 and then his shot from the drop zone doesn't react the way he wants it to he thought there was like an upslope and there wasn't and he was freaking out like legitimately freaking out and uh 
did not play well the rest of the round. He gets a 16, which is the Smiley happy hour hole, and it's Sam Burns, who's his best friend, and Smiley sitting there. They have no choice. The players have no choice but to walk within like five feet of them to get to the green. Scotty like doesn't even look at them. And uh, Ted like turns to them and is like, don't talk to him. Like this yeah. is like like Scotty losing his mind, which I think is great to some degree because Scotty's having like one of the greatest seasons ever, and he's still yeah. losing his mind on the golf course. Like, how are Not we? Easy to say as mere mortals supposed to play this game if that's how Scottish Scheffler is reacting. I think he was getting a little bit worried that like Xander was going to, because I think there was a world in which Xander could have gotten the number won. one. I think if he, if he had, had won. won yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. And he, I really think he, this is the one thing he hasn't done yet is uh, win the tour championship. So I think he really, really wants it. And he's pissed that like, damn, I'm going to, am I going to lose this season to, to Xander Shoffley right now? So he's, he wants it. He talked about in his interview yesterday that he's getting to East Lake last night and playing this morning and playing all week. But I thought that was funny too. Like it's freaking insane. Like if anyone's going to crack Scotty Shuffle or just give him a nod, even on like a, a good day, because Scotty probably would just keep his head down on a good day. It's going to be Sam Burns. And uh, Sam and Scotty were like, just nothing. Well, and I thought too, you know, it's like, was we've all had those experiences, whether it's golf or something else, when you're with you, like your best friend and they're just like yeah. fuming mad about something, but you can still like drop a joke and they'll like laugh for yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah. And like, and I thought that's what was going to happen. But Sam was legitimately almost afraid and like didn't say anything. Yeah. So that, so that speaks volume about like how upset Scotty was. But State of the Union here on Scotty playing new golf courses because we've this has been a take for a while. It was my take at the Golf Nash and Allen why I thought he wasn't going to win. Uh, because he had never played there before. And so far, we look at Pinehurst. He finished T41. He finishes T33. There's only 50 players in the field. Scotty yeah. effectively, like, it's almost like a missed cut from Scotty with, like, where he finished with how many players are in the field. Loses approach for the first time since... Holy shit, this is insane. Loses, <laughs> okay. loses strokes on approach. This is BK's take, too. BK uh, loves his take. That he's yeah. never played a... This is data golf, so these are adjusted strokes gained approach. But last time, there's red in the strokes gained approach column for Scotty. August 14th, 2022 at the FFC wow, lot, Championship. Uh, two years, almost over two years since Scotty last loser strokes on approach. Is Scotty like a, a savant where he needs to, once he learns like the information, he's like an AI, like a robot, where once he gets trained up on the, the AI, he's good and he's unbeatable. But when he doesn't have like the training data, he doesn't have the information yet to train the models, to train the AI, he can't win. So what's the, that seems like it may be the, the case uh, with Scotty. Yeah. I mean, like if it is the case, so like, like that's awesome because every, no one, no one, like they, they barely play new courses. So, Shout out Scotty. If you see the course once, you're just gonna win. And I mean, he's seen it East Lake multiple times, but I think these renovations will are going to help him. So uh, I guarantee he's not gonna lose on approach this week. So I think he's gonna bounce back in a good way. Yeah, we'll talk about the renovations in just a second. But yeah, I think that's officially my Scotty stance is that he may be some sort of artificial intelligence, uh, but he needs the training data. He can't just you can't yeah. expect him to know how to work without being able to to run the compute, get some uh, get some training runs in on the data uh, quickly. Hideki uh, probably was going to win the so tour. He was probably going to win the BMW. He uh, came out guns blazing was making every putt again he was making putts from like 100 feet i was wondering we were wondering uh, we were texting we were wondering if uh hideki was using a cheating putter and then now uh, we wake up and hideki's not playing golf anymore he is out of the tournament any do we have any intel on on i assume he's playing this week i don't know why he would yeah i mean but, uh, uh, that was weird luckily he held on to the third spot he i feel like it would have been really bad if he dropped down but the way it all panned out he held on to that third spot um, yeah, he was shot, looked great in round one. And then I got on my plane landed and I saw Hideki withdraw. And I was like, what, like, what the hell? Uh, just so Hideki, like when it makes sense, he, he withdraws, he comes out of nowhere and, and wins. So I, I assume he, he would be fine if he's there. I feel like we should, we'll hear from an interview or hear from a report, like what the scene is and why he would really withdrew, but he looked he didn't look great on on during the week. Like he had a showed up videoing him on swings, and he was pulling a few drives. So I don't know. But then he looked great in, on Thursday. So Hideki is just a, a case. He's just a case that's just so odd. I uh, we'll talk about the changes to East Lake here in just one second because I forgot to say something when we were talking about the site when we were doing the like and subscribe stuff. We need to give a shout out to Extended Wrists. I was going to say that one, too. Again, 
another winner this time at the women's open. Uh, Lydia gets the win. I think that's three wins in the last five weeks for uh, our boy. And they're all uh, like 10 X cards. Yeah. Well, 10 X cards. These are like 30 to one winners. Uh, he just put his card up for they're playing TPC Boston. Apparently uh, Ooh, this week, fast. he's already got his card up. I'm, I'm back of the napkin math here on the uh, X. This is like an eight, nine, 10 X card. Once again, uh, if you like golf, if you like the LPGA, I, I really think this is the best LPGA content in the game who who yeah. else is hidden, hidden winners as much as our boy extended wrist yeah shout out extended wrist i saw that uh the sweat was going on and i didn't really see his card until late in the round and i was like there's no way he has lydia he has lydia and then uh it it went down i didn't watch too much of the of the women's open i was sweating uh freddie lax and then we got into the ludwig sweat so uh but i'm sure it was fun watching st andrews i heard the wind was insane did you watch any uh, I tried to watch a little bit. I was I didn't realize I was mainly I think on Peacock the first few days. Like I couldn't find it, which is a bad sign because like we're used to trying to find golf tournaments on TV. So again, shout out to NBC in a negative way. Like you guys are a disgrace. Yeah. You're uh, doing it again. It's completely unacceptable. It's bad in every single way. But anyways, shout out to Extended Wrist. Great job uh, from him. He's he's the man. There, there's uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. All right. Eastlake, Andrew Green. We've seen Eastlake a million times. Andrew Green, same guy who uh, redid Oak Hill uh, for the PGA Championship last year. After last year, kind of, I'd, it's called a refurbishment. It's not really a redesign or a remodel. Right. All the holes kind of look the same from the T. There's some changes off the T, but if you just look from above, it's going to kind of look the same. The biggest differences are the greens and the bunkering like he's gone to yeah. if you remember it from oak hill these kind of sharp bunker edges where the greens kind of like are more kind of like they have like more rectangular square edges to them is a way i guess to describe it they're not like circular they've got kind of the firm edges and then the bunkers are right there the greens are bigger there's more pin positions i was looking at the photos it looks pretty sweet like it looks yeah i, I agree awesome and historically this has been a driver putter course like and again i'm talking about this in the without strokes market just taking the strokes gained for the week because that's going to be the best way to figure out who yeah well i feel like we'll talk about that as a whole this these next yeah 20 minutes yeah and uh it's been driver putter all the guys have gained a ton off the team a ton putting we've seen guys win the without strokes two of the last five lost strokes on approach like it's not been an approach play course the greens get really firm the fairways get tough to hit and if you're driving it long and straight like it's just a huge advantage and then you just hit the green hit to 15 25 feet make a ton of putts that's why xander's had so much success here xander's a great putter xander's usually a pretty good driver he just makes everything on these greens and plays well same with Roy. i think overall like historically you look at these refurbishments you look at how courses play after they get changed around they tend to play pretty close to the same stat lines even if they do look a little bit different to how you get there i do think that one of the changes was that the fairways had become much firmer. Apparently they like changed the grass in the fairway. Yeah. So it maybe came a little bit harder to bomb it down the middle. Cause you get, you get the ball running into the rough and it may allow the, the shorter hitters who historically haven't necessarily had a ton of success here to get some run, to get into the mix. Uh, but overall I'm leaning towards it playing relatively similar just because I still don't think you're gonna be able to hit it that close to the pins. If anything, they're going to put the pins in tougher spots on these bigger greens and tuck them. I think you're still going to have to hit the ball to 15, 25 feet and make a ton of putts. Um, how are you thinking about it? But at least for me, I'm kind of thinking it plays relatively similar, but it's going to look a lot cooler, uh, in the process of getting to that kind of final step. Yeah. I think there's a path for, uh, for both bombers and shorter hitters off the tee. So I'm going to de-emphasize off the tee again and really look into around the green play and approach. And I got, I want guys who are hitting high balls into greens because the greens, I think are going to play so firm, like any new course would. And um, I heard a lot of the uh, around the greens are shaved now. So like uh, there's going to be less uh, rough chips, more like grainy chips, which is always a, a difficult task. And especially if the greens are firm, uh, there's going to be a lot more chips than we normally see at East Lake. So I think around the green play is going to be important this week. I'm expecting a lower uh, winning score in the without strokes market than we see normally or lower as in harder. So it's because it was, it was minus 19 last year. So yeah. I think it's going to be closer to 15. Yeah. I think it depends too on the weather. It looks like it's going to be fine. The first couple of days, if it rains, obviously that will impact yeah. it. But overall, like I think when you talk about approach, 
it's approaching like a GIR percentage type of approach. Yeah. It's you can't really hit it close at this. That's been no. one of the like at this point. Yeah, it's hard to throw darts. It's our boy Donnie Ross. Uh, we know uh, what he does, and I think like, yeah, I want guys who have good GIR percentages, but it's not one of those. And this is why Scotty has struggled here historically. It's like you can't just hit it next to the pin every time and make a ton of birdies by throwing darts. Now we'll see how that changes with the des- the redesign. But if the greens are firmer, then it becomes even harder. Nobody's going to want to take on the pins because if you miss, you're going to get short sided in these runoff areas and all that stuff. So I do agree with you that around the greens probably goes up in importance. Cause if we look back historically, uh, yeah, the winners have gained a little bit around the greens. You don't necessarily have to gain a lot. It's been like medium, but I do think, yeah, it probably plays a little bit more difficult around the greens. So I think you need to drive it well. I think you need to make a ton of putts. And then if you hit your approaches onto the green or you get it up and down a lot either way, like that's fine. But this has been a place where, I mean, this is an insane stat that I'm about to tell you. The last five winners here, if you just look at the without strokes markets coming into the event, Every single one of them. I took out Kevin Na because he tied with Rom, and I assumed if there was a playoff that Kevin that Rom would have won. So I'm giving it to Rom. But all of them gained at least. F- they had four spike approach events off the tee in their last ten starts before the event. So gaining over four off the tee in t- four of their last ten starts before the event. So like we never see that. So guys gaining infinity strokes off the tee coming into the event, and then all of these same guys spiked for at least four putting in two of those 10 events so just guys who are spiking with the putter putter. and spiking off the tee have had tons of success the only three guys this week that fit that profile of four spike off the tee events and two spike putting events xander rory and vic coming into this week uh and those guys they've had some success uh yeah this event that's an insane stat so yeah so it's been driver putter and like i said i don't see a lot of reasons why that will change this week but we shall see uh, I do have breaking news that Bet Online has the without strokes market jersey. We are in Beautiful. business here. Uh, we'll talk about. We talked. The what do they got on Scotty's? Four to one, three to one, five to one. Wow. Uh, so, and we just talked about it before. It's Scotty plus. They've got Scotty plus one twenty. Xander plus two twenty five in the with strokes. I have a hard time believing that one of those two guys doesn't win. Do, do you have any interest in any of these odds in the with strokes? Um, I think Scotty Scheffler with strokes is a good bet, but I don't think it's going to, I mean, I'm not betting it. I might bet but it, I, I, but I'm saying down the board, like outside of oh, Scotty no. and Sandra. Do you no, 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 no. Okay. no. Yeah. Me neither. Like, obviously Rory has a lot of success here, but he's starting so far back and he's also not playing that well right now. And then Vic was the other guy who like, I at least wanted to see what he was doing because Vic played really good last week. He just putted horrifically, but like T to green Vic was pretty good and he's played good here before he's 60 to one, but he's eight shots back of Scotty and that seems impossible. So we'll talk without strokes. Uh, So basically just normal. We call it the shadow leaderboard. This is just normal golf who ends up playing the best for the week. Scotty's plus 500 Xander's plus 550. And then everybody else is double digits. Uh, any interest in those numbers on Scotty or Xander? I'm shocked that, that Scotty is five and a half to one. But uh, And I will note, I this is say, bet, bet online where the odds tend to be better. These are usually the best odds. So we'll see like what FanDuel and DraftKings come out. But yeah, five uh, five to one right now. Yeah, I would say no. Well, I, no, not neither of them. Because I, like, I think I'm going to go with a card guy who can play uh, stress-free, a guy who can play in chase mode and uh, make it happen down the board. Yeah, and if we look historically uh at this event for the guys who have won the uh without strokes market hold on just a second i think okay so last year vic won both he won both he tied with xander in the low gross but he won both rory won both in 2022 uh the year before that cantlay did not but not in rom one they were the the without strokes but not the uh with strokes and then the year before xander won without dj won with and then the year before rory won both so three of the last five years or at least since they've done this the winner has been the guy who also wins. Odd. Odd super, it is surprising because i tend to lean in the same direction of you where it's like i want the guys who are just trying to come back the whole time shoot low scores but maybe what's happening is those guys are getting momentum and they're playing well and they end up winning 
the tournament just because they get this momentum behind them. But I do agree with your take in general. And I think I'll be doing the same. Or I'll just be looking a little bit down the board for guys in the without strokes who are starting further down. Uh, Rory's 10 to one. Obviously, Rory's played great here. Rory played okay last week he did a lot of dumb stuff as he's been tending to do he did putt better i gained in every category finished t11 which is fine uh any interest on rory at 10 to 1 i just don't think he's sharp enough to like win a golf tournament right now i think he's he's fine but i just don't think he's sharp enough to win even if winning is not actually winning yeah like i'd i'd take the field over rory yeah i agree uh, i'm good at 10 to 1 uh 16 to 1 there's four guys colin ludd pat and uh vic who uh maybe how would you rate those four right now with how you're thinking about the course colin ludwig pat and vic at 16 to 1 i would rate it pat number one ludwig number two colin vic no vic colin vic colin vic colin and give me the reasoning for that Patrick Cantley, I think, is finding things right now. I think Patrick Cantley is doing the right things. And I love that he um like I love that he doesn't have to win this tournament to win the uh thing. And I love I love that he can just get scorching hot with the putter. He's been better on Bermuda the last two years since he's moved to Jupiter hashtag Jupe Life. And I I, li- I like what he's doing, like hitting the ball the last few events. He's finally finding something competitive with the ball striking like he hasn't done early in the season. Um Ludwig, I just think he's fine. I think he's good. I think he could he's a big boy ball striker who could do it with the bomber, hit fairways. Uh Colin, I know I said Victor, then Colin. Victor, like you said before, absolutely striped it last week. And he's done it here before. I worry about the around the green a little bit. And then Colin, two straight weeks of kind of less than stellar ball striking. And hard to trust less than stellar ball striking if you have to make some putts. So and it's Colin. Yeah, I think I'd go. I think I'd probably go the same. I think it's, I agree with you on Pat. I bet both Pat and Vic last week and Pat played fine. He completely boned himself with, he he wasted three shots on the back nine on Saturday, purely from not listening to LaCava. LaCava was like, you cannot hit this club. It will go long of the green. Do not hit it. And Pat was Wait, like, really? Yeah. On 11, LaCava was like, I think it was like nine iron. Like, uh, Cantley was like, I'm going to hit it full nine iron. And LaCava was like, that will go over the green. And he was like, and Cantley was like, no, stock nine. And LaCava was like, no, you cannot hit a full nine. And he hits it. The second it's in the air, Pat's yelling at it to get down. It flies over the green, dead into the rough, instant bogey, like completely boned. And then on 16, uh, the one with the water, same thing. They're between eight and nine, I think. And LaCava's like, nine won't get there, but at least it like will be a little short. You'll be fine. And Pat's like, no, I'm going to feather an eight cut like into the wind, dead into the water. Penalty again. So, and then there was one other. I don't, oh, 18, same thing. They misclubbed 18 and came up short and then he didn't get up and down. So like three strokes, right? Can't lay would have been like two shots off the lead. Two are like, he ended up making miracle bogeys on all of those. Like he got them all up and down to make it only like three strokes. So good at doing that. But he, should have finished higher than he did. Like he was not adjusting to the altitude, which was disappointing. Cause I think of Pat as like, Mr. I know everything like numbers guy, but maybe that was the problem. He thought he knew everything and he didn't. And look, was off. So get back to normal golf. Yeah. We're not calculating Pat. things. Pat makes sense. He played good last week. He's been gaining across the board. He looks back. He, he, he gained on approaching six straight now for the first yeah. time in a long time. He's looking good. He's playing good. He also said he's not going to play any golf in the fall, and he's committing all of his effort to try to make as much money uh, in this point of the year as he can. So Pat will be focused. I, I could, what? I'd probably put Vic ahead of Ludd actually, because Vic has played so well he, right. here. Obviously, last year he's playing great. Like yeah. he should have. Like, another guy who just should have finished higher than he did last week. He coming into the final round was on track for his worst putting event of his career. He could not make anything uh, on these greens. But the week before on the Bermuda at the FedEx, he gained four strokes. So T to green, Vic is dialed. He also didn't drive it great last week, which is weird because he's been driving it amazing. His approach has been super dialed. I have no problem going back to Vic. I think he's probably my favorite play once again this week just because I think Vic's game is there. It hasn't all come together quite yet. I do agree with you that if they're around the greens is a little bit more difficult, that might deter me because he did gain last week around the greens, but that's because it was the fluffy pop it out of the rough yeah. stuff that he usually does best. Uh, Lud, yeah, I have no strong takes on Lud. I don't love the price 
on him. But if it yeah. is winning without actually winning, that could be to to Ludd's advantage. And then yeah, Colin, he made sense last week. What was your you yeah. obviously bet him and in, in got worse by the day. Bet. Yeah, what was the deal? He got worse by the day. And it, the first two days he was top three on approach, absolutely striping and bottom three or bottom five in putting. He I I never seen so many uh, shots that he feed that didn't go that didn't convert. Uh so he looked really solid and I think then after that he was like I'm too far back now. I think and then they just got out of it. But he was striping to start the week and then went in the wrong direction. Uh at 20 to 1 is Sammy B and Tommy Fleets. Uh this would be winning without winning probably for uh Tommy. Yeah. Sam's obviously been just rolling the putter amazing all of a sudden. The T to green still uh hit and miss from our boy Sam. I really liked him. I've liked him the last couple of weeks at the big odds. I don't know if I love 20 to one here, uh, but if you had to pick between Sam and Tommy, who do you like at 20 and would you bet either of those guys? I would bet Tommy. I'm expecting Sam B to be most tipped. That's my uh, early model in my mind is expecting Sam Burns most tipped in the shadow market. I don't know if we're going to get that though. So shout out the chart and the, sh- the chart, the chart shouted us out actually also <laughs> yeah. last week. So great guy, Andy. So we appreciate your work. Um, no chart winner last week in the 50 man field, uh, Brian Kirshner. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I think I'm going to go with Tommy because Tommy is the prototypical win without winning. He won without winning at the Olympics, and he without Scotty Market fucked me on Hideki. So, yeah, and Tommy has been done nothing but absolutely flush the golf ball the last, like, two months. I did see FanDuel also has a winner without uh, Scotty and Sander in the with strokes, which is kind of interesting. I saw some numbers there that also uh, were interesting. So oh, really? Yeah, so look at that. might have to – it's basically – keep an eye out. Once FanDuel puts out the, their normal odds, but it could be there could be guys who are better to bet in that without Scotty and Xander, but with strokes than the just without strokes. So you're gonna have to do some math. You're gonna have to do some calculations there, but there might yeah. be something there. So just something to uh, keep an eye out. Uh, Wendy's twenty-two to one. Windy home game last week. Uh, volatile week. Some good, some bad. It was kind of a typical windy week. He's twenty-two to one. Adam Scott's 25. Sung is 25. Sung always plays good here. This is 100% a Sung course. Uh, Sung 25. How do you how do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, Atlanta native. Sung, Sung, Sung should feel at home here, and he's played really well. I like how he bounced back off the tee last week, coming off of his work, worst off the tee uh, week of his career. So uh, you get Sung in Bermuda, he could definitely roll the putts, and he has zero chance to ever win the FedEx Cup, but he could definitely win the shadow. And he's fought for the I think we both had him a year or two ago when he finished runner-up. Yeah, and, two years uh, ago. Yeah, so yeah, I like I like Song, and I, and I, I also like Wyndham too. He was off the tee; he was first and and almost last on approach. But he's doing he's showing good signs of that driver putter, and he finished third year last year, getting across the board, and he's finally showing some some good signs and some dog. So I like I like Wyndham in chase mode too. So I uh, yeah I uh, I bet Wendy here last year because of the driver putter build. Oh wow, and he played good. He, I don't remember what his odds were, but obviously he played well and he's driven it. He's gained with accuracy in three straight starts off the tee, which is what we've been wanting to see from Wendy because when he was struggling there for a while, he was just hitting it off the planet. And when he yeah. hits it off the planet, it really goes off the planet. Uh, yeah. So driver putter, Wendy, uh, scrambling around the greens, Bermuda, shout out LACC. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll give Wendy some consideration for sure. Uh, I'm not going to give Adam Scott any consideration. I think uh, he is, his race has been has been run. What, what is that? Twenty five to one. Yeah, that's some of the worst odds I've ever seen. Uh, at twenty eight, Russ Henley, Bermuda specialist, Donnie Ross specialist, uh, and Tony Finau, who didn't quite pick up the T nine last week. He was he was almost he had it he had it right in front of him he blew it he finished t13 uh lost infinity strokes putting gained yep. infinity strokes t to green he uh he's played all right here historically any interest in uh ross or, or tone yeah strokes gain georgia i do like uh russell henley this week get him on bermuda and i think this is a great buy spot for russ he's been fairly popular the last two three weeks in, in different markets and i think this is a great spot to dip in on him, he was pop. He was super popular here last year. I remember. I but, was on uh, him. He was playing good, and then he made like an eight or something terrible happened to him. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. But yeah, I do like Russ in the without in the without market. Uh, I'm, only one, I'm only one API this year, so he could he could do it if it's firm and fast. Yeah, yeah, like Russ. Uh, get him on Bermuda, make some putts. Why not? Why not Russ? Uh, he was T three. Wow, last year was his first tour championship since 2017. So shout out to Russ uh, for the consistency this year. Getting back, played uh, okay last year, I would say. Uh, JT and Billy Ho are 30. 
Shout out to Billy Ho. Billy Ho is popping in the models this week. This is a Billy Ho golf course. Billy Ho yeah, has won is. at this golf course. Billy Ho has had well here multiple times. Win a second, a T9. He drives it well here and he makes putts, which is ultimately what I'm on the lookout for this week. And he has gained four on approach in four consecutive events. Billy Ho wow. is flushing. Billy Ho is flushing. Billy Ho has played well here before. Billy Ho has dog. Billy Ho in chase mode. Pedal down. Let's go get it. I know he'll be fighting until the final putt drops, regardless of where he is on the leaderboard. Billy Ho at 30 uh, has my attention. Billy Ho, I don't even know if this was on the – we didn't we did do the rankings, but he was first in a strokes gain confident looking last week. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, he played, definitely he, 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 The putter – let him down. He gained across the board T to green and he's getting back on Bermuda on greens that he's had plenty of success on. Obviously they're, they're new greens, but you give me Billy on Bermuda in great form on a Donnie Ross course. I'm going to be interested. Yeah. It's your guy too. So, you know, Bill, uh, JT at 30. What's the state of the union on JT? He barely qualified. Yeah. He barely qualified. He should feel comfortable here to green, but he, like he can't make any putts. He can't get the 19 under 14 under Keegan 33 back to back. Keegan, Keegan, Keegan would like be down for that, but I'm I can't do that. Uh, Aaron Rye, I need to talk about. He's 45. This is the 45 guys. Uh, we'll talk about all of them. Rye, Teague, okay. Straka, Rye, Teague, Straka, Lowry. Uh, first of all, Rye, <laughs> clown show last week. Uh, completely show. let me down. Terrible performance. Uh, unserious golfer, and I'm officially removing his dog. He he, we were we were deciding if he would keep his dog after Wyndham. Uh, we were concerned that Billy Ho had given Rye his dog and that this was a fraudulent win, a non-real dog win. I am now, I've seen enough. Uh, that was what it was. Rye does not have dog. He's off the dog list. He's not under consideration. Uh, going forward. I think he, he was just happy to be there. I think he was just happy to be yeah, there. This is, he's in happy to be here mode. We'll uh, keep our eyes peeled when he gets back to the uh, BMW PGA Championship over. Uh, I assume he's going to be playing that after uh, finishing second last year. So we'll, we'll, we'll reconsider Rye once Euro season gets going here shortly. The, the, the Euro season, the DP season, is supposed to really get going it's, here. This is, it's this gonna, is the first week that it starts. Yeah, it's going to be good. We got, we got the British Masters. Are they playing the Belfry again? I believe so. I believe so. Where they've got that drivable par four with that creek that goes up the right, like 12 or something. Yeah. So cool. Shut up. Uh, freaking blow last year. T Hats is playing. Hatton is, yeah, uh, seven one, uh, yeah. is headed over there. It is the Belfry. Sweet. Uh, T has, has minus 110 for a top 10. That cannot lose. Yeah, that that seems like a lock. Uh, that's probably a better bet than, than Scotty or Xander at the tour championship is uh, top 10 on Hatton at the BMW PG or at the uh, British masters. Uh, shout out to Daniel Hillier and uh, Ryan Fox. Uh, Teagues is 45 to one as well. He finished last place. I think or close. Yes. Yeah, DFL. No, he was DFL by four. I think. Uh, yeah. For, he was 48th, but that's because two guys didn't play. He lost infinity strokes putting. He's, He's playing terrible golfers. He's playing horrible golf. You saw it with your own eyes. He's not playing good. He's 45 to one. So is Sep, uh, BM or a uh, Bermuda specialist. He's played good through a championship before. He Sep finally put well last week. Did he? How did he play? Yeah. I like Sep. And Sep, Sep has one yeah. more chance to, to pay off the, the great ball striking season. I know it's kind of faulted a little bit, but get it. Strokes gain Georgia. I'm down for some Sep. Yeah, 45 to 1 on Seth. I, I don't hate that. Uh, he's driving it great. He finally putted well again. He's putted well here before. And he's striped approach here two straight years. He's gained over six on approach in both starts uh, at the yeah. tour championship. So I don't think I don't think Fix cares. I think he's happy to be here. He knew his spot was safe last week. So he's like, whatever. And he, he played it here last year or two years ago and it was horrible. Uh, so Fix, I don't think really cares at all. I cannot I truthfully did not believe what I saw with my eyes on Tuesday and Wednesday. It was think of Rory Prep with you or I actually doing the golf. That's what it was. Not good. Not good. And then uh, the other guy is Shane Lowry, who's making his debut at East Crazy. Lake, which is absolutely insane uh, information for a major champion for guys who had a lot of success. He uh, plays good on the Bermuda, uh, usually. He should be and the Furman Fast Bermuda. So yeah. at 45 to 1, Ry Teague, Straka, Lowry. Sounds like we'd maybe give a look to Straka and Lowry. But probably, yeah, this is a good, set. like a nice little range. I, I do like those two guys. Uh, Akshay 65. I'll, I'll hype Akshay every week. I don't care how he plays. He was playing fine last week for a while, and then the approach play completely ejected. He either gains a lot on approach or gains nothing on approach. It's a hit yeah. and miss for him, but 
he's kind of driver putter most of the time. The only things consistent yeah. from him are driver putter. Uh, he's going to hit the fairways. If it's firmer and faster, I think that plays to Akshay's strength. He's 65 to one. Uh, there's only 30 guys in the field. He's 65 to one most of the time. So I don't hate that. Uh, then it's Bez 65, Ben on seven. How's Ben on in the tournament? Ben Strong start tournament. to the season. Strong start to the season. Wow. That is, that's probably the most surprising name on the list. Uh, is ben yeah. on, but shout out to him for getting here. Uh, driver putter, maybe. Uh, Bez, Ben on Pendy. Shout out to Pendy. Played good again uh, last week. Hoagie did lead the field in approach, I think, which was another Vic clap Christ. from from the boots. Uh, was that Hoagie was going to stripe on approach. I believe that he led the field. Let me check here. Uh, yeah, he did. He gained 8.4 on approach. Yeah. So shout out to Hoagie getting the shorter irons in his hands and flushing. CK, shout out to CK uh, for getting across the finish line there with a strong final round. His first top 10 since the RBC Heritage to sneak into the uh, Tour <laughs> Championship for the first time in a long time for Georgia native and Bermuda specialist Chris Kirk. He's 70 to 1. Uh, Bobby Mack is 70 to 1. And then Pabs is 150 to 1. Uh, nice. I've, I've got a Pabs take in a second, but before Pabs, I know he's not your guy, but any of these other guys uh, down the board catching your eye? Yeah, Chris Kirk. Like you get in Mar Bermuda, he's gained an approach in four straight. He can make birdies in bunches. Uh, definitely down for some CK. And here's my Pavone random year of the week uh, take. There's only one choice this week for random year of the week because there's only one guy in the triple digits and there's only one, and it happens to be a Frenchman. And we talked about at the beginning of this pod how well the Frenchmen have been playing. Uh, what do we say about Pabs? When the holes are straight and it's just hit it straight and then make a lot of putts, like at Pine, Pabs. So, I don't, a shit, you're right. So, I don't think he has any real chance. He He's not been playing good at all, but he was not playing good at all before he showed up at Pine and finished fifth. So, Pabs, final turn of the year. Maybe he's been kind of in happy to be here mode. He knew he was going to qualify for the Tour Championship no matter how he finished. Uh, the French, there's some positive vibes happening. Uh, Ale, Ale, Ale. So, yeah, Pabs. Yeah, I, don't he, I mean, he sees all the boys. I mean, Vic Vic won the Olympics. Rivetto last week. Uh, Freddie Lacks the week before or last week. And, yeah, Pabs got to figure it out because he's got to, he's became the patron French golfer of the world. Uh, so, figure it out. You're at the Tour Championship. So, overall... I think we're both going to be targeting the without strokes, the shadow leaderboard market. I'm sure in the discord, we'll be keeping tabs on the uh, standings there because sometimes it's tough to know who's what's going on. They don't usually update it uh, on the broadcast too often, but I think we're both leaning towards, there's some interesting guys in that kind of 16 to one range, the uh, Pats of the world, the Vicks, the Ludvigs, and then down the board, maybe in the forties. Uh, I think that kind of, and then Wyndham, but overall, uh, probably pass up the top of the board for both of us and look uh, kind of in the down the board build a normal card. I think would be what it yeah, sounds like. Yeah, still the card. Agree. Uh, DP bet Fred British Masters. You're trying to make it back to back uh, the Belfry. We've seen all sorts of crazy stuff happen at the uh, the Belfry historically. Is, is Thor Olsen playing? I believe so. I I I'm, I, I think he is. Let I'm not check. sure. Because if Thor Olsen's I I, playing, he is. I, think I saw his name on there on the top. Yeah, twenty eight to one on uh, Thor. Uh, what happened to the to the Hoshes? Uh, what happened to Rasmus and Nikolai last week? Rasmus was first round leader. He was six under, and then they both ejected because there was a delay. That's what I thought. That's what I thought was going to kill Freddie Lax. Freddie Lax on Friday went out and was like five under through uh, through eleven or fifteen, and then he went back out the next morning and went like bogey, bogey, bogey. So I was like, damn, the delay really killed him. Like Adam Scott at at Oak Hill, uh, but then the, the delay killed uh, Rasmus, I guess too, and they both didn't do anything crazy. Uh, it looks like I'm just scrolling through the uh, odds board here on the DP. Uh, it looks like just the normal DP field plus Terrell Hatton is uh, yeah. what we got. Uh, Sammy Charms is getting hammered. One. Charms, yeah, 75 to 1. Jorge Camps, 75, 70 to 1. Uh, is Rio is Rio playing? I saw Rio Charms played. was live fave uh, at one point last week, and I had him at 90 to 1. He was live fave on Saturday, but then he okay. faded hard. He made uh, three, I think he made three eagles in a round. <laughs> He makes so many eagles. He's the eagle king. He's the eagle king. So shout out to Charms. But uh, yeah, that's uh, the week. We got Tour Championship. We've got the Bet Fred British Masters. We've got the LPGA playing at TPC Boston. And once again, shout out to Extended Wrists uh, for all of his great calls there. And Jers also, most importantly, probably more important than anything we've talked about, is we've got the US Open. Tennis starts this week. Oh, this uh, will be there. Yeah, I, will, I will be there tomorrow. 
I love the US Open. It's my favorite sporting event to go to. It is adult Disneyland is how I describe it. Uh, it's extraordinarily expensive. Uh, you will lose all of your money when you're there. Uh, but you will not regret you doing it. any of you it because yeah, you're 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 a Disney guy, right? You've said that before. Like when you go to Disney, know you know it's going to be a, a, it, you know it's going to be expensive, but you don't regret it because you know oh, it was worth no. it. Yes, I will be in Disney October second. So if you're there, say what's up. There you have it. All right, we've also uh, UW football kicks off this week. Uh, we're starting with a, a game we're against uh, uh, Weber you're, and State. You're, you're getting into college football this year. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, I'm always into college football. You're, because, you're like deeper though. Yeah, because of. Uh, you'd up like or yeah usually all right so uh and a lot of things to uh, unpack for us this year new coach new everything yeah. people i saw somebody had the audacity to predict we'd go two and ten that person should never be allowed to post uh, publicly about really? any predictions on anything ever again that's one of the most disgraceful opinions i've ever seen in my entire life and uh, washington by the way the first program to make the national championship and not be ranked the next season in like 50 years the disrespect that we get uh year in and year out yeah yeah uh do uh, you coach- think are you rooting for uh, DeBoer to have success at Alabama or no? I so here's I've it's been enough time now between when it first happened. I hoped that they would lose every game forever. Yeah, and I'm definitely not rooting for him to like have success and win like ten national championships and, and basically be Saban 2.0. I definitely don't want that, but I'd take like I also don't want where he's getting shit on like all the time and people are like, this guy's a bad coach because they go like 10 and two, you know, or something like that. And it's like, this guy's not save it. And people get pissed at him because he is a good coach. He's an amazing coach. And he took Washington and like, no matter what, if Washington never made the championship game ever again, the rest of my life, which is definitely possible. I will forever remember last season as like the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. And he was, he was the driving force for it. So I can't like hate him that much because that like we, those memories will be forever. So I'm kind of neutral. Like I, if at first was like, I hope he loses every game. I definitely don't want him to win every game. I don't want him to do amazing, but I don't want him to be like nationally shit on as like a bad coach because he's, he's not. Yeah, no, it's fair. I just want, I want to know your take because who's your, uh, I know you've you're always got eyes on the football. Who is your kind of any sleepers, any teams this year that you've got your eyes on that uh, maybe don't um, jump s- the page? Sleepers, yeah, I think I, I think a sleeper could be uh, Clemson. Actually, sixty five to one now, and I think they've just been a forgotten team. They still they they're the only team besides the service academies to have zero incoming recruits. I mean, incoming transfers. Sorry, incoming transfers because. Uh, Coach uh, Sweeney doesn't believe in in the yeah. transfer portal, <laughs> but uh, I, that's probably a bad thing. But they still have they they were going to have one of the best defenses in the country. And Cade Klubnik, kind of like how DJU was once a like a highly touted guy. Cade Klubnik was once a highly touted guy who never really panned out. But this is third season uh, being quarterback, so he can't get much worse. There's they're, the twelve team playoff. They could definitely make the playoff when the ACC well, easily. Yeah, I was going to say okay. the ACC. The ACC still gets an automatic team in right yeah to the, every single the, conference all the, the power five get an automatic conference okay so the, they'll be in i mean there won't be like a shoe in but we just saw florida state lose to georgia tech like i would assume clemson is the so favorite now the clemson's ACC, live right? fave yeah. yeah so they'll win if they win the acc they're a top four seed they're 65 to one at rivers so um all right I bet yeah i don't, I don't hate that because i'm always on board of the in college football you roll with the programs that have histories yeah. of success and like Clemson speaks for itself of what they've done. Dabo, obviously uh, taking a novel approach to the uh, modern uh, transfer portal game, but uh, we'll see how it works out for him. And I do like that as a, uh, as an underdog, there was one other thing that I was going to say. Um, let me see if I can remember it. Is it a, a long shot called to both team? Uh, no, I remember it now. Cheers. Washington has obviously been a part of the uh, realignment in college sports. We know college sports has been crazy. I will say I'm happy that Washington <laughs> is in the Big Ten. Like, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, my God, like, I can't believe the Pac-12 yeah. is dead. Like, all that ever happened from being in the Pac-12 was people shit on the Pac-12. So I'm glad that we're free of that. Like, overall, I'm a fan of the changes to It'll college be sports. For the better. Yep. However, I received a notification on my phone last week or maybe over the weekend. And it said that UConn is cons- is leaving the Big East Big or considering leaving the Big East to go to the Big Twelve for, and it was one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. As a because we're college basketball guys more than yeah. anything, like college basketball is our bread and butter. It, it ruins college. Like I know the Big Twelve will be awesome in college basketball; it already is. And you add UConn there, but like, what is UConn doing? They've left the Big East before and kind of had some down seasons. They come back to the Big East and now they're two time 
basketball national championships champions. I know football drives everything. UConn's never yep. going to be good at football ever. There's nothing that no. UConn can do to be at football. I was sickened, Jerz, when I got that information. Yeah, they said the AD said that he wanted it to be for football. They're going to put a ton of money into football, but it would take them a long time to. Comp- ah, I don't know. We'll see. It depends on how many how much well, money they I put into it. I think the problem it, is too, like part of college football is the recruiting and the areas that you can recruit. Like yeah. UConn's not in a, a hotbed of recruiting. Even no, if they it's wanted, not. Even if they wanted to be good at football, I just don't see it. So like I <laughs> was second when I saw, and I know college football outweighs college basketball, but it was just disappointing as a college basketball guy to see the beautiful Big East, the great success that UConn is having. Uh, it really, really was a, a stab in the, uh, the chest when I saw that. The Big 12 would become like, the third NBA conference, if that was the They're case. adding, uh, they'd add Gonzaga too, apparently. Oh my God. The Big 12 is insane <laughs> in college basketball. So, yeah, college basketball is around the corner. Uh, we'll probably be doing stuff for college basketball uh, come November. I'm excited for that uh, when it comes. But, Jers, great season. Great job uh, with Boots. Great job with everything. As I tweeted this out, but I said, great job for Boots, but you're a great dude nonetheless. And that's uh, been Much awesome. Doing this, I hope that I hope that we can play some golf before you head back down to Florida. And even if you head yeah. back down to Florida, I'll come down to Florida and play some golf there. Uh, it's been a great year. Appreciate to all the uh, subscribers, everybody who listens to the pod. You all are the best. And uh, yeah, let's have a week. Yeah, appreciate you and appreciate all the subscribers. Thank you for the year. Let's do it again next year. Peace out.